I gotta get a better manager. Hi, uh, PC Awards, come on in. Ignore that. Hello and welcome to day two of the 2021 Australian PC Awards. I'm your host, Nick Richardson. Let's get this underway. Again, a huge thank you to our sponsors, Asus, Samsung, ESET, Dell, Adata, Aftershock PC, Aten, Corsair, Crucial by Micron, Gigabyte Notebooks and Components, MSI Notebooks and Components, PC Case Gear, Razer, Thermaltake, and Western Digital. Let's head now to the CPU Awards, which are proudly presented by APC. It's the old David and Goliath story. Should you buy an Intel CPU or an AMD unit? 2020 saw AMD taking the lead and crushing Intel's Goliath at the high end of the market. But then a new scrappy underdog entered the ring with Apple's M1 chip blowing expectations out of the water. If you can describe a company with a $2 trillion market cap as scrappy. So now it's David versus Goliath versus something way more expensive than Goliath story. Who's cornered the CPU market according to the editorial team? Let's check in. To talk about the tech space in 2020 that potentially had the biggest shakeup, CPUs, Ben. Uh, Intel, the, the king has been beheaded. That's what we do with kings. Uh, not beheaded because it's still alive and well, but it's a continuation of the last um, three years now where uh, AMD Z, uh, Zen Architecture has just changed the landscape completely. After a decade in the doldrums, AMD's taken over the market and certainly the mind share. Um, they've got the high ground, they've got the high performance gear, um, they have beaten Intel for most of the mid-range stuff and the only and for most of the time they held the low range product as well. Intel's just come back with some interesting low to mid-range product that's taken the fight back to AMD. But the problem is that AMD's got at least two or three years of probable market lead ahead of it because they're on the seven nanometer process where Intel is still struggling with um, almost decade old technology that is going to take a long time to cement. And so what was the key to AMD being able to suddenly outperform Intel? Uh, well, they had the chiplet architecture, so they were suddenly able to put more cores on a CPU die, whereas Intel um, used the monolithic architecture, which means that all of the, um, all of the chips have to fit into one um, IC, uh, which is the CPU. AMD can put little mini ICs that are CPU cores around the central uh, processing thing, and that lets them have up to 64 cores. It's not cheap to buy, but it's possible to make and there's a market for it. I think, I think Intel's coming back with some new products to, to, to try and scramble that back. But, in, but AMD did have that, that kind of, that sewn up. Um, We're probably seeing a new sweet spot around about the, the eight core mark. Mm -hmm. um, uh, AMD has, AMD's 12 and 16 core options are the undisputed market leaders at that, at that sort of price range for productivity. But for, as far as gaming goes, uh, I would say eight core is about the sweet spot now, and that's a pretty competitive market. Both uh, Intel's uh, new Rocket Lake uh, 11700K, 11900K, certainly very fast CPUs, but they have run very hot and consume a lot of power, but they are competitive. If you want the best gaming CPU, it's still Intel, believe it or not. So it is a very competitive market, whether you want, to, uh, you want the best uh, with no consequence, or whether you want something that's not quite as fast, 95%, but a lot more efficient, runs cooler. It's a, it's a pretty competitive market, yeah. But then the biggest surprise when it came to CPUs is probably uh, the um, Apple M1, right? Like the, coming out and blowing away any expectations that we had for it. Yeah, so in the laptop space, um, Apple's M1 chip has been uh, a massive, uh, um, they kind of knocked it out of the park on their first go. Uh, they haven't had um, CPUs of their own before, they used Intel previously and uh, this is their first chip and it's beating anything that Intel can produce this year, both in efficiency, performance, um, power usage um, and uh, new RAM architecture which is, all of these things are really interesting and totally new in the space. Qualcomm has been trying uh, to do low powered CPUs for a long time in the mobile market and they just um, haven't quite, they haven't quite nailed it. Um, they haven't quite matched the performance, um, but Apple has been able to, yeah, not only match Intel first time around, but beat them. Yeah, and I think the other, the other side of that story is that 
you know, Apple's done a really good job with Mac OS with making older applications just run seamlessly on their new hardware. So, you know, the, the new hardware is spectacular, but even, even older programs run great on it. And that's through a, you know, uh, a compatibility layer that's, that adds so much more complexity to the whole thing. It's a fascinating architecture because they've actually added a um, AI processing unit that allows it to transcribe from um, a, a risk sort of uh, processing um, operation to something that uh, runs, you know, full fat computer programs. Um, and it does that on the fly and it does it faster than uh, processes that are built for it. So it's a pretty amazing technological feat. Let's not forget too that these are ARM processes. Is it the end, is it the beginning of the end for x86? You know, we know that AMD's had an, X, uh, an ARM processor in the works, um, in the skunk works for a while. It hasn't been released, but um, Intel's got all of its eggs in the x86 basket, um, in the consumer space at least. Um, you know, the Apple's N M2 is rumoured to be just around the corner, and even more impressive, is it the beginning of the end of the um, x86 architecture? It definitely could be. It's impressive. Um, Apple surprised us all with the amount of power that, um, that they can actually use these chips. Um, never before has anyone really competed in that space. So um, it, obviously the efficiency benefits you get, you're getting battery life that are double what they were on any laptops. So mm. definitely for mobile, uh, it could be the end for um, traditional uh, x86 processors. And looking good for ARM. And if uh, NVIDIA are successful in purchasing ARM, as they really, really want to, pending regulatory approval, will they make a mess of everything that made ARM so good over the years? You know, the open licence. Yeah, buy our architecture and do whatever you want with it. I don't think NVIDIA is going to yeah, let look, that if fly. if anyone can, it's them. Mm, what, mess with it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> David, are AMD and Intel going to be able to match the kind of leap that Apple have taken with the M1? Um, not with the advantage that Apple has in both the hardware and software side of it. They make the new hardware, they've got the old software they're making run really well because they own it all. Um, that's a, an advantage that's really hard to beat. With more choice than ever this year, let's find out who took the CPU crown. The CPU is one place where you don't want to compromise, but you don't need to spend a fortune to avoid those bottlenecks. The finalists for best value CPU are... The Intel Core i5-11400F, the Intel Core i5-10600K, AMD Ryzen 3 3300X, the Intel Core i5-10400F, and the Intel Core i3-10105F. And the winner is the Intel Core i5-11400F. With impressive performance for less than half the price of a 5600X, for those on a budget, this is truly a slam dunk. And coming in with the highly commended, it is the AMD Ryzen 3 3300X. A special little gem if you can get your hands on one, and the Intel Core i5 10600K. This value CPU offers the performance of a flagship CPU from just a couple of years ago. Remember how AMD used to be really good? Well, when it comes to the high end, they're back with a vengeance and giving Intel a proper run for their money. The finalists for best premium CPU are... The Intel Core i9-10850K. The Intel Core i5-11600K. The AMD Ryzen 7 5800X. the AMD Ryzen 9 5950X and the AMD Ryzen 5 560X. And the winner is the AMD Ryzen 7 5800X. A great enthusiast processor, Intel cannot beat it and it does everything well without breaking the bank. And coming in with the highly commended, it is the AMD Ryzen 5 5600X. For a gaming only focus, the 5600X is perfect. And the Intel Core i5 11600K. This powerful hex core CPU offers very competitive performance at this price point. 
Next up is the Storage Awards, which are proudly presented by Tech Radar. We all spent a lot more time at home in 2020, and one of the things I personally missed the most was going to the cinema. But it finally gave me a chance to build the ultimate Plex server and store, organize, and tag all of the content that I've absolutely legally acquired over the last decade, and you can't prove otherwise. And with so many reliable storage options on the market, we certainly were spoiled for choice. There's nothing quite as sweet as spending six weeks networking, cataloging, and intricately organizing 14 terabytes of movies and television shows only to then plop on the couch and turn on whatever Netflix tells me the rest of Australia is watching this week. And right now, the rest of Australia is watching the editorial board debate storage solutions in 2020. We are back with the editorial team and we are talking about storage. Dan, it was the year of speed in 2020. Yeah, we've, we've finally started seeing uh, PCIe 4 just widely available. We've got really fast uh, M2 SSDs to, you know, that are, that are just setting new benchmarks at the top end. And we finally got kind of widespread uh, motherboard availability. So, you know, it, it's, it's, it's that kind of merging of those two mm. that's, that's finally making things work. Things are getting cheaper too. You can pick up a one terabyte SATA SSD for you know, not much over a hundred bucks, which is amazing. You know, NVMe SSDs are almost as cheap as well. But conversely, you've got this Chia crypto on, on the horizon, which is probably going to do for storage what it did for CPUs and GPUs. It uses storage space. It's on the rise in Asia. Chia, but... what? Chia. Chia. Mm. As in Chia T, C H I A. I hate it already. Um, well, it's coming to eat your hard drives, so. So explain to me Chia Crypto, why, why is this... So all the cryptos dependent? so far have mostly at least been based on processing. So they you know, run your CPU and GPU at 100% and it goes through um, um, calculations and computations. Chia is simply a mass real estate of storage space. So it, as much uh, storage space as you have, it, it plots that land with data and the more you have, the more money you can potentially earn. And we're seeing it uh, drive storage prices up already just in the last few weeks or so, throughout Asia at least, and it's going to spread out and um, it's no nothing but bad news. Joel, did we see any improvements in external storage uh, over the past year? Definitely. Uh, the external space has been interesting. We're finally getting some um, USB 3.2 uh, arriving on laptops, which has been great. Um, the tech has been around for a little bit. We've seen a couple of external hard drives from WD uh, come out with new products with th this uh, USB spec, um, and it's twice as fast as the last generation of USB, um, which is great because you've got external NVMe drives that can actually use that extra speed to, um, you know, really deliver in external performance. So, yeah, portable S storage is great at the moment. And Chris, is SATA still something I should be looking at if I'm building a PC today? For mass storage, I would say yes. Um, but uh, these days, uh, mechanical hard drives still have, a, still have a place, but only in very large capacities. Uh, you wouldn't buy, there's really no real reason to buy, say, a two terabyte hard, a mechanical hard drive now. We can get a, a SATA drive for, for, that, for that cheap. But um, also, I would say, perhaps Joel can, can chime in on this, that uh, entry level laptops, probably only in the last year or two have really started to ditch mechanical hard drives as their, as their main C drive. But now the cheap laptops would, would probably move to SATA, but even now again, la cheap laptops can probably think about incorporating a, an NVMe drive. Definitely. So you see, we, we actually see a lot of NVMe drives on uh, laptops and systems these days. Um, it really has picked up a lot in that space and not even the gaming laptops these days are utilising uh, hard disk drives anymore. They're just too heavy and too bulky. Uh, today's laptops are, you know, thin and light, even if they are running 3080s. Um, so you definitely, it's, it's almost a dead tech in that space. Um, you, it's NVMe all the way. And we're finally getting our first NVMe 4s on uh, laptops, which is amazing because you're getting 5,000 megabytes a second read and write speeds, which is 10 times what you get from SATA SSDs. It's a major kind of transformation in the space. I think I think we really could be seeing the end of the mechanical hard drive just in general, both in laptops and desktops. It'll probably be only another few years before they're, they're gone from both those types of systems. All right, well, good chat. And let's move on now and see what's in store for our winners. Shut up, David. 
Let's be honest, you used to save documents and photos and videos and spreadsheets locally, but now they all live in the cloud. And the only reason we buy internal SSDs is to store all 476 terabytes of Call of Duty. And to keep that daily patch monstrosity safe, you need the best. The finalists for best internal storage maker are... Western Digital, Samsung, Adata, Crucial by Micron, and the winner is Samsung. An unblemished record of quality, value, and choice. Okay, so now that COD is taking up your entire internal hard drive, you will need somewhere to back it up so you don't need to download it again when you're doing a system refresh. The finalists for external storage maker are WD, SanDisk, Crucial by Micron, Samsung, Adata, and Seagate. And the winner is WD. Thoughtfully engineered storage products covering every conceivable need. And taking home highly commended, it is Seagate. Innovative products like the Fire Cuda Gaming Dock demonstrate Seagate's commitment to innovation. I know we all love the cloud, but you know what's better than the cloud? A local cloud. All the benefits of storing and sharing your files with none of the pesky downsides like having your data harvested or being pushed ads for dog food when you only mentioned in once passing to your partner. I know you're listening to me! Ordering six kilos of dog food now. Cut the cameras. The finalists for Soho NAS are Synology DS1621 Plus, Synology DS920 Plus, Terramaster F5221 and QNAP TS-130. And the winner is the Synology DS1621 Plus. A great combination of performance, capacity, features, expandability, and price point for any SMB. And with the highly commended, it is the Synology DS920 Plus, simultaneously a great expandable entry point for NAS newbies and a powerful feature-laden office server for SMBs. Let's head on to the System Awards, which are proudly presented by ESET. Moving on, and I know you're not a real PC user unless you built it yourself, but you know what? Sometimes I don't want to spend three hours putting on cable sleeves and having to earth myself and dealing with boot failures. Those three hours could be better spent updating drivers or installing new BIOS upgrades and trying to figure out why your microphone is constantly auto-leveling itself. You know, PC ownership. So to get the time to concentrate on those truly important things, you can't go past a pre-built system. And my favourite pre-built system is the editorial team for the 2021 Australian PC Awards. We are talking about systems and Joel, thanks to COVID and work from home, uh, computers got more of a workout in 2020 than ever before. Did they hold up? Definitely. Um, we've seen probably one of the biggest generational leaps in uh, systems processes uh, development this year. Um, the headline feature is obviously Apple uh, M1. Uh, it's been transformative, um, has massively boosted the performance that you can expect to get from a mobile processor, uh, and it effectively doubled the lifetime of um, laptop systems, which is always a great thing when you're out and about. Um, you need a laptop that's going to last as long as possible. So that's a huge leap in that space. Um, but even uh, in the gaming space, uh, we've seen some AMD systems that uh, the 4000 and 5000 series, uh, they're actually beating uh, 9th and 10th gen Core i9s in laptops. Uh, and they cost less than some of Intel's Core i7 uh, laptop variations. So. It's, AMD's been doing a really amazing job in that space. Uh, they're not as common uh, as you'd like to see. Intel still have a stronghold on a lot of the laptops in the area, but, uh, but AMD are delivering some uh, great efficiencies and some really impressive performance at, at quite amazing sort of price points in the system space. So uh, it's been a huge year overall. AMD was really strong in the laptop space and you know some of the best laptops of 2020 were an AMD CPU paired with you know an Nvidia 3000 series GPU the and the pricing on those was incredible for the for the respective performance that you were getting. Well AMD have got those they've got the cores they've got more cores uh, they're lower more efficient cores so their battery lives are lasting longer I've seen some gaming laptops that are lasting twice as long as 
uh, what they'd usually last, which is still only, you know, four to six hours, but uh, it's something, it's a lot more than what we used to get. Um, and yeah, AMD is just, it, the efficiency and the cost in that space has been quite amazing. We've seen a few um, quality of life improvements too. So proper mechanical keyboards coming around, mm -hmm. Alienware's got a nice one, crazy screen refresh rates up to 300 hertz. Um, you know, 4K as well, not at that rate, but still there is an option. And the old, you know, designed by a 12 year old with a box of crowns look seems to have been left in the past and a nice subtle, stylish, more refined look is, is uh, becoming popular. So that's, thank you Taiwan, good job there. There's definitely been improvements in that space. Uh, they're looking really refined. Mm. Uh, there's lots of some really great looking business laptops, which is important now that everyone's working from home. Um, and yeah, a lot of design in that space uh, for some really powerful systems. Yeah, and it's across the board. In, in the, it wasn't too long ago when a Dell XPS 13, you know, was the poster child for a, you know, really nicely designed with good materials laptop. But uh, Microsoft's doing continually good stuff with the Surface range. Um, everyone from Taiwan, whether it's ASUS or MSI or Aorus, Gigabyte, you know, they're making some really beautiful stuff. You know, Dell as well, HP as well. It's it's it's. It's a good era for laptops at the moment, both hardware and design. I definitely agree. And suddenly that little webcam no one ever used, everyone is now using. It's become so damn important. One of the, my favourite gaming laptops from two years ago uh, didn't have a webcam. They ditched it. Um, and that's definitely not something you can do so in the current good climate. Move, <laughs> of course, I'm also now paranoid about the webcam being on, so I actually put one of those little sliding sticker things on it because, yeah. Got to protect your privacy. Absolutely, yes. Mm -hmm. Should I really be worried about that? Should you? Oh, God. <laughs> so, Joel, we've got laptops that look good and they run great. Can I actually buy them? They're definitely still available. Uh, laptops are almost more available than uh, a lot of the GPUs, if you look, or components in general. Um, the demand is obviously uh, Low, lower. I, I don't think there's quite as many people um, looking for those systems, specifically maybe for crypto mining or the other uh, purposes that they get used for. So there, there is actual availability in that space. Um, Although we are, crypto's having an impact. We are seeing yeah. crypto farms based on laptops uh, with, you know, hundreds and hundreds. Um, famously recently in the last couple of months there was one particular uh, batch of laptops that was made several hundred that was bought by just one company for that purpose so it's almost the last bestie and the crypto the professional crypto farms look at the market and they think okay what's what's in excess supply well just buy all that up and make it work for crypto and that's what's happening for laptops well what won't crypto ruin hopefully not this next set of awards the first system award is for value laptop or two in one and the finalists are the Asus Zephyrus G14, the Asus ZenBook 14, the Asus VivoBook S15, the MSI Summit E14, the Apple 13-inch MacBook Air M1, the Asus Tough A15 and the Lenovo IdeaPad Flex 5 Chromebook. And the winner is the Apple MacBook Air 13 inch M1. A 1499 MacBook with 11th gen i7 like performance and a 19 hour battery the single biggest laptop innovation we have ever seen. And highly commended goes to the Asus Tough A15, an AMD gaming laptop that's ahead in performance, price and perks, and the Lenovo IdeaPad Flex 5 Chromebook, a great cheap alternative to Windows for browser-based workers. And while that's the first time the words value and Apple have ever been uttered in the same sentence, sometimes you want extra bang for your buck. You don't just want a laptop. You want a laptop with an OLED that flips and turns into a tablet, that doubles as a table, that also puts the kids to bed and does some light repairs around the house. The finalists for premium laptop or two-in-one are... The Asus ZenBook Duo 14. The Asus ZenBook Flip 13 OLED. The Gigabyte Aero 15 OLED. The Razorblade Pro 17.
the Aftershock Vapor 17X, the MSI Creator 15, the Apple MacBook Pro 13 inch M1, the Dell XPS 13 9310, and the MSI Prestige 14 Evo A11M. And the winner is the Apple MacBook Pro 13 inch M1. Impressive performance bump, massive GPU improvement, double the battery and cheaper. What more could you possibly want? And taking home highly commended the MSI Prestige 14 Evo A11M, a great all round professional device with fast Gen 4 PCIe storage and the Asus ZenBook Duo 14, a unique premium product offering if money is no object. Gaming laptops used to look like stealth planes and sound like old planes and weigh as much as commercial planes, but now they're a completely viable way to click heads and complete dailies. The finalists for gaming laptop are... Asus ROG Zephyrus Duo 15 the Asus ROG Zephyrus G14, the Gigabyte Aorus 15P, the Aorus 17G XC, the Aftershock Vapor 15X, and the Aftershock Vapor 17X, the MSI GL75 Leopard 10 SFSK, the MSI GE76 Raider 10UX, the Alienware M15 R3. And the winner is the Asus ROG Zephyrus G14. The turning point for AMD mobile CPUs in a perfectly executed package by Asus. And taking home the highly commended, it is the Aura 17G XC, an extremely powerful gaming laptop. This machine is a weapon with exceptional cooling to tame its meaty innards. And the Alienware M15 R3, a seriously well-engineered premium device with a wide range of options and a great looking chassis. Building a desktop PC can often be like that episode of The Simpsons where Homer is building a barbecue. There's what it looks like in the picture on the box, and then there's the twisted metal monstrosity that you put together yourself. That's why when you want something done right, you go to the professionals. The finalists for desktop maker are... Thermal Tape, Aftershock, MSI, PC Case Gear, JW Computers, PLE, M-Way. And the winner is Aftershock. Aftershock has to take it for its insane personalized builds. There's a price premium, but you can get a custom built Ferrari for it. They also have the quality all sewn up. And taking home the highly commended, it is PC Case Gear with well-balanced and value builds. PC Case Gear is typically always on the ball and MSI. We like that MSI pushes the boundaries of case design, not only in terms of looks, but also functionality and interactivity. And that is the end of night two of the 2021 Australian PC Awards. This was like the uh, Empire Strikes Back of the awards ceremony. So tomorrow night, well, I hope you like Return of the Jedi. We'll see you later.